All right, tonight we're going to make uh, fajitas on the Big Green Egg, which happens to be one of our favorites. So I'm uh, just going to show you the ingredients real quick. But basically what we're going to go with, you'll see these are loaf pans. Um, very cheap, about two bucks a piece. You see these have some road wear on them, but um, I can guarantee that these are sanitary, so don't worry about us. But anyway, uh, you'll see I have four lined up here. Typically what we like to do is we like to have one for beef. Um, we'll just sit in here uh, in a marinade that I'll make out of Dale's and uh, lime juice. Uh, then we'll have one for chicken and we'll prep that with just lime juice and some Cholula. Uh, and then the last two will just be uh, basically peppers and onions mixed and tossed with pepper and olive oil. As far as ingredients, uh, we have low-fat, or actually fat-free soft tacos. Um, we have four cheese, Mexican uh, Sargento, reduced fat. Uh, we have skirt steak, which we will slice up into little slivers of steak. We have pre-cut chicken tenders, so those will also be kind of chopped up into fine pieces and marinated. We see our onions and our peppers. We have our lime juice, olive oil. Uh, we have our Cholula. Um, and then as far as seasonings go, um, outside of the Dales, we have uh, Grill Makes Montreal Steak Seasoning for the steak part. We have uh, Weber Kicking Chicken Spice for the chicken. And then we have salt and pepper um, to mix with those vegetables. So I'll go ahead and prep the meat, let it marinate for a little bit, and then I'm going to set the big green egg up um, just with an open flame, get it pretty hot, and then we'll probably bring it back down to about 350 or 400 so that we can let all these ingredients kind of boil in those loaf pans and get a lot of that smoky flavor. Uh, the wood chip that we're going to use tonight will be the Jack Daniels bourbon barrel. Um, just gives it that real smoky bourbon thick flavor, um, especially on the steak. Compliments the chicken, all right, but it really comes in on those vegetables. So we're going to start with cutting the skirt steak. Uh, you'll notice I'm going to use different uh, cutting boards for steak versus chicken. Uh, you just don't want any cross-contamination. Uh, but we're going to cut these uh, kind of down the middle, um, these skirt steaks, and then do them in kind of uh, one inch by two inch uh, little slivers, kind of like little medallions. And then we're going to drop them in the marinating uh, loaf pan. And then uh, we're going to add uh, Dale's lime juice, cilantro, and steak seasoning. All right, so now that we got the uh, steak all chopped up and prepped, you'll see that we kind of got them into these... Uh, they're almost like little sliver medallions, uh, not evenly cut, not evenly sized. It's just kind of like, you know, very thin little cuts just to make sure that as we cook them, they cook quickly. Um, almost kind of like a hibachi concept, except we are boiling them. You also notice I'm using a different knife and different cutting board. Uh, I'm about to prep the chicken in the same exact way, um, just uh, to make sure that we don't get any cross-contamination. I'm just doing it in a completely different environment. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cut the rest of the meat. We use a different cutting board and knife again for all the vegetables and the cilantro. And once well, we get all that cut up, uh, we'll go ahead and prep all of these dishes and let them hang out for a little bit before we actually throw them on the grill. All right, so with the chicken prepared as well as the steak, my lovely assistant is going to be preparing the vegetables. Um, as far as the vegetables go, you can cut your peppers and onions any way you want, as small as you want. Uh, but we typically do uh, pretty large slices on the bell pepper. Um, and then we do probably equally as large chunks on the onions just to keep it uh, juicy and fresh when it's cooked off the grill. Um, so I'm going to, at this point while she's doing that, I'm going to uh, start up the grill and then we'll talk about the wood chip selection. Okay, so the setup on uh, tonight, we're just going to use the firing. Uh, we're going to use the uh, standard grill grate. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get this fire starter plugged in. Um, and then after about seven minutes, I'm going to come and yank it off. You don't want to leave a fire starter on there too long. It can damage it uh, or potentially cause a bigger fire than you planned. But once I pull that off, I'm going to put this grate on and then I'm going to let it sit with dampers wide open uh, for about up to uh, you know 30 minutes to an hour, hour and a half. You really can't let it go too long. Just want to check and make sure it doesn't get too hot. But I'm going to bring it to about 500. And then uh, after that, I'll be able to put everything on. And then I'll talk about wood chips in a second. Okay, the wood chips for this evening, I'm gonna use the uh, Jack Daniels uh, Old Number 7 brand uh, 
wood chips. They're actually made out of the bourbon barrels that the bourbon's age in itself. It gives off a real strong bourbon flavor in that smoke. Um, like I said earlier, it really complements the steak well. You don't really catch too much of it in the chicken, but it really tastes good on the, uh, on the vegetables, especially after you kind of add your salsa or your cheese or your cholula or whatever you're going to eat in your uh, fajita taco. Um, it's really going to bring out that smoky flavor. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab uh, a good handful. I mean, you want it to be a lot because we're going to soak this longer than the recommended 30 minutes. Um, just because we're going to give the rest of the meats uh, time to soak in those flavors after we throw them in the marinade. Um, but yeah, we're basically going to fill up, and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. I'm going to fill up a small Tupperware dish, just a little sauce dish, uh, with a whole bunch of wood chips. So you'll see it's pretty full at the top when you pat it down. It doesn't have much room left for the water. But we're going to take some warm water, and we're actually going to fill it up all the way, really. So right when it's about to overflow, and then we're just going to set it aside for 30 minutes at a minimum, and that's just so that it burns slowly and gives off that, that rich smoke. But uh, you know, you can let it sit here as long as you want until you're ready to put it on. I'm probably going to let the grill go outside for a good hour, hour 15 minutes tonight. So these chips should be well saturated by the time we start the fire. So you'll see what my beautiful assistant did while we were out, um, but basically, um, we have cilantro that'll be used uh, pretty much on everything but the vegetables, very finely chopped. And then as for the vegetables that'll go with this, um, it's just a drizzle of olive oil over uh, peppers and onions. Um, you can really use any um, vegetable, but uh, we prefer sweet onions, um, just uh, cut, quartered, and peeled. And then uh, we use the bell peppers, take out the seeds, and just thinly slice them. Uh, you just drizzle them with olive oil. Uh, cracked sea salt and pepper and then you just kind of toss them so that there's a light coating and that's all there is to that. Um, so next we'll prepare the uh, meats and then uh, we'll get ready to cook. Uh, while the meat's cooking um, my uh, fiance will be cooking rice. Um, we use chicken stock with it, but you really can do any size with this that you want. All right, so now we're going to uh, prepare the meat. So basically it's already been chopped and sliced. Um, we're gonna basically just take it. We're gonna drop it all in this pan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give a good amount of low sodium Dales. You can use regular Dales, but it's a little bit too salty for us. So I'm just going to kind of coat the whole thing. Um, and really the key is no matter how much you're putting in, I may actually do probably two thirds of this. You really want full coverage so that when it's in the egg, it'll actually boil, which will help it cook quicker. I know it sounds weird doing that on a grill, but um, the smoky flavor really seeps into the marinade while it's cooking, and you really don't lose any of that smokiness or any of that grill flavor. So now we're gonna add uh, lime juice, any lime juice. But really, you wanna pretty much do almost this whole bottle. You want it to be about two-thirds Dale's, one-third lime juice, just to give it a little bit of that Mexican flavor. So I'm gonna use, that's probably enough, so there's probably still a third of this bottle left. So I'm gonna kinda give that a quick mix real quick just to get those two juices talking to each other. Then we're gonna drop in this Montreal steak seasoning. This is just to give it a little bit of that grill uh, steak flavor. So you're just gonna kinda dust it in there. Add a little bit of spice, pepper to it. Mix it again. And then we're gonna bring in the cilantro to really go overboard with the Mexican flavor. So. You don't have to go overboard on the cilantro. Cilantro is such a strong flavor, um, so you definitely want to go too much if you don't like the flavor itself. But for the steak, that's probably enough just because there's already a lot of flavor going on. So you just want to mix all that together. And then uh, you're just going to let it hang out until you're ready to put it on the grill, um, just so that the flavor seeps into the meat. And then, like I said, it's going to boil on the grill, and it's going to be ready to pull off quicker than you think just because it's sliced so thinly so just keep an eye on it and if there's a lot of juice left over when you pull it that's fine because you'll just strain out uh, the meat anyway we're gonna do the chicken 
So basically I'm going to take all this chicken that we cut up and drop it in our pan over here. It will clump together, but that will all separate when you add the marinade. Um, for this marinade, it's real simple. It's just basically uh, Mexican hot sauce and lime juice. We prefer Cholula, as far as our hot sauce goes. And uh, because it's so much lime, sauce, lime juice, you're just going to use the rest of what we use from the steak, as well as um, the second bottle. So, we're just going to empty this guy out, which can get messy. to this guy. And the acid in this will really help break down that chicken and make it really moist. Give it a lot of flavor. So then we're gonna kind of mix that around, let it get in all the chicken pieces. You'll see it's starting to separate already. Then we're gonna add a good amount of hot sauce. This will really give it that Mexican kick, kind of a bite to it. So Cholula's not the best bottle for doing mass quantities, but you're gonna do about a third, a little over a third. You can add more or less, it just depends on how much heat you can take. So that's, uh, a little bit less than a half. So then we're gonna come in here. You can use any chicken seasoning you want. I prefer kicking chicken. Um, it gives it some of that heat, some of that saltiness to uh, soak in all that flavor. Give it another mix, and then we're gonna top it off with cilantro again. Um, cilantro is gonna be kind of that main flavor for this one. It's gonna take it over the edge. So you can go a little bit heavier on the cilantro with the chicken just because there's less competing flavors there. Um, it's already going to taste, have a, a good Mexican bite to it, so I'll go with about that much. And then we're going to just kind of mix that all in, let all those flavors collide, and then uh, we're going to let this sit out until we're ready to put everything else on the grill. And uh, it should be ready to go, and uh, we'll boil it up in a little bit. So now we've prepped everything. Uh, really, we're just kind of in a holding pattern. A lot of it depends on when your sides are going to be done. you got to kind of play that planning role and just see, you know, guesstimate how much time this is going to take versus when the sides are going to be ready. Uh, this whole thing, I mean, really is, is subjective. For us, it takes about 25 to 30 minutes. Um, typically, the uh, vegetables we pull off first just because we prefer them to be a little bit more raw. Um, you can leave them on there longer to kind of crispen up and uh, leave the top a little bit more caramelized and a little bit soggier. But uh, we usually take those off first. The steak usually comes off next. We try to keep it uh, medium. Um, and then the uh, chicken usually comes off last just to be safe. But uh, I'll show you how to stack all those up on the grill. And uh, as we do that, we're also gonna add these, uh, these wood chips. Now that the grill's ready, we're gonna put all of our ingredients in. I strained out the water from the wood chips. So we're just gonna lift the grate. We're just gonna sprinkle these throughout the fire. I have a strong fire going at about 600, so it's gonna drop pretty quickly once I add these chips and leave it open for a second while I do this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place all these pans that we prepared. I usually put the meat towards the bottom first just to make sure it starts cooking a little bit quicker. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna line three of these guys through the middle and then we're gonna stack one on top. I usually choose a vegetable to leave on the top just because the vegetables will cook quicker than the others, and then I'll realign them if one cooks quicker than the other. But that's kind of how it goes. You'll see the smoke's already coming up, so we're gonna close this. We're gonna be about 10 to 15 minutes and then pull off. You're just gonna have to check in to make sure that uh, you know stuff isn't burning and pull it off as it's ready. But the good thing is since they're in these pans, you can just kind of send them aside inside, and they'll stay warm, and then you can kind of serve them like a Willie's or Barbarito's uh, burrito concept. So what I actually did is the fire uh, started kind of billowing up uh, while I was closing the lid. I actually decided to close the dampers a little bit. A, to preserve some of that smoky flavor. You'll see that I have it almost a uh, quarter turn. I'm gonna actually try to turn it a little bit more. Try to suffocate those flames, but keep that heat in. So you'll see a nice billow right there. 
Uh, this area down here, I kind of just close it a hair, maybe about a, a quarter of the way, um, just to make sure there's still enough airflow so that all the smoke doesn't escape out the bottom and suffocate the fire. So you'll see it's at about 400 right now, so we're at a good temperature, and uh, we're just gonna let it sit here for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, check in on it, you know, every five to 10 minutes, just to make sure nothing's on fire. Uh, pull it as uh, you think each ingredient's ready, and then uh, we'll be able to serve it on tacos inside once everything comes off. So now we're gonna check on the progress on this. Now, one thing I've failed to mention is every time you check on everything, you wanna give it a good stir, make sure nothing gets too burned on the bottom. So we're gonna check, you'll see that the veggies, and it's been about 10 minutes, you'll see they're starting to get a little bit of a uh, golden hue on these uh, onions. So you just wanna tap in there, don't do anything too drastic. Let's test the bottom of these over here. So nothing's sticking right now because that olive oil. I think we're doing all right there. Um, we're not gonna stir the meats yet because we want them to cook a little bit more before we risk cross-contamination, but uh, they're pretty submerged, so I'm not really too concerned about anything sticking to the bottom at this point. So we're gonna go ahead and close this and uh, give it another uh, five to 10 minutes when we check on it again. Like I said, it's not common that you really can burn anything here because it's all kind of either boiling or it's just vegetables simmering in olive oil. So uh, you really can't go wrong here. All right, so we just pulled the uh, veggies off. They look like they're done. Um, I wish you could smell it right now. It smells incredible. Definitely has that smoky flavor to it, but Anyway, um, so we're just gonna let these hang out. The meat's still on there. Uh, the sauce that the meat's been cooking in, it's really turning into kind of a syrup um, that's largely in part due to the smoke from the wood chips. So we're gonna let those hang out for a little bit longer just to make sure they're done. Um, our side, which is this wonderful Spanish rice, has been done and hanging out for a little bit. We'll serve that on the side and we'll be making our fajita tacos very shortly. All right, so I think the meat's just about done. So I'm gonna kind of show you what that looks like. You'll see that it's boiling. Um, the chicken kind of has almost an orange hue uh, from all that lime and cilantro it's been cooking in. The meat really kind of almost looks like a, uh, really kind of like an Asian type of uh, teriyaki. It's mainly due to the dales, largely soy based, uh, with a lot of caramelization as well, but it's kind of becoming a real thick syrup. So that's kind of when you know it's done. Um, so we're gonna pull this off. We're gonna let it cool down for a little bit and then we're gonna use a uh, straining spoon as we serve ourselves uh, so we don't get too much of that juice on there and we kind of let it strain out. And you also do the same exercise when you save the leftovers and this will make plenty of that unless you're uh, hosting for a whole party, which this probably will serve. So the co total cook time on all this, as soon as it went on the grill um, over to finish, was probably closer to probably 35, 40 minutes. Um, like I said, you can't really go wrong, you can't really overdo it. It is boiling, so it's almost like doing a slow cook in a crock pot with both of these. So there's a chicken. You'll notice it's got some uh, crispy edges. Uh, definitely it has a little bit of browning aspect to it. Uh, the steak kind of almost has a syrupy feel to it. Um, all those flavors kind of melded together and, and kind of uh, a lot of the uh, sweeter stuff in there kind of caramelized. So that's gonna be real good. Um, and then again, the vegetables, that's up to your, your own preference. We like ours a little bit crispier, so. Um, you'll notice it, it's, it's kind of charred on the outside. Um, this is the one that was closer to the flame. We like to cut that or mix it with some less done ones as well, so just to give a little bit of variety. Um, so shortly after this cools down a little bit, we're gonna kind of strain out the meat, drop it on some tacos, uh, add some veggies, add some rice, and uh, we'll show you what that looks like, and then we're gonna enjoy this. So the way I like to kind of do this, especially when we have a lot of friends over for a party, is I'll just line the trays up, almost kind of like a, your average burrito shop, and just let people make their own. Um, I usually go with one chicken and one uh, beef. Not a huge fan on onions, but I will add some peppers to it. Um, also adding some cheese, so mine's really kind of like a, a less glorified uh, burrito, um, or a couple of them I should say. So start with the chicken, let's see what that looks like. Just kind of get in there, use a straining spoon, strain a little bit of it out. Give yourself a little bit of that. Don't go overboard either. You want to make sure it's going to fit in the taco. Give it a little more a little good big guy on there. See some of the juices are sliding around, but that's okay. Move over here to the steak. So you'll see that looks real good. Kind of almost has an Asian glaze on it, but I can assure you that it's going to taste very much like carne asada. So we'll strain a little bit of that out so we don't make this plate too sloppy. Go. Got a little bit of pepper on here. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the onions, so decided for a little bit of a flavor pop on each. A couple more of those. 
And I'm also gonna dress these with a little bit of hot sauce because I do love that. And then we're gonna, while it's still hot, walk back over and get some cheese on this. And then I'll add some rice and that'll be the, uh, the perfect plate. So the next time you see me on this film, I'm gonna show you a bite because I never trust anybody that shows one of these films and doesn't actually take a bite of it. So we'll do that, but otherwise I'm about to chow down. So this is what the final plate looks like. Obviously you can make it any way you want. Um, you can also do a bowl as we see there. A little bit of salsa, also an excellent way to eat it if you're on a low carb diet. Uh, but I'm going to take a bite of this wonderful steak taco. And I didn't really fold a very good taco, but that's fine. Mm. Really good. It has a lot of that smoky flavor, a pan of cilantro, some of that dill's popping out, and the pepper is excellent. So anyway, that's a lot. Hope you enjoy it.